I'm just going to give her a little, little tiny bit of fullness up in the center part of her head. So I'm going to do continuous strokes like that, the consistent strokes, always 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I know a lot of you are attending school or have uh, gone to schools where um, our videos are played. And lots of times when I'm traveling, I'll, I'll be just walking down the airport and somebody yelled, "Hey, Martin! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just shrink into the popcorn bin. But I appreciate it. You know what? It does make sense that if every section you take, you tease it with the same number of strokes that your result is going to be nice and even and balanced so that there's no uh, drops to the hair. I'm going to start right in the center back of her head. I want this to go quickly, so I'll take maybe four sections on each side. But I'm going to drop this hair out, slide a bobby pin on the end. We're going to keep this low in the center back and just put a bobby pin on the hair like that. And when I pull the end down, it turns the bobby pin over. I'm going to slide it up right to the occipital bone on a diagonal. Sticking your finger up doesn't do anything. Mine just won't stay down. Okay. So I'll take the next section like this and just tease it. Nice small little strokes out towards the ends. So what you want, if you like this look or like this idea, just remember whatever parting it is, don't go into another section. This is all back and forth within the same panel. So when I take this section, slide a bobby pin on it, it comes right back and sits up over top of that first piece keeps the hair nice and lifted and we'll take the bottom section, slide a bobby pin on it. So you can make these sections really big. I'll get larger as I go towards her ear, but it's nice and natural. Draw the next parting, that whole panel, and I'll take this one and direct it in towards the center back. But watch how I pull the hair down. It turns the pin right over, gives a nice sort of massage look to the hair. We'll take another section here with the bobby pins on the end. And just remember something, you know, updos are a natural uh, extension of our talents. And all it is, is remembering that when you move the hair, when you want to fold it like this, that your bobby pin only goes straight up. And you can pull the end down to turn the pin over or lift it up if you want to build more height. I want to keep this low into the neckline. So this sits right on top. I always think right on top of the hot dog. <laughs> this is like the bun part. I'll take the next section, turn it. Now watch, I'm pulling the end down, turn it over, bring the end back, pull the end down, turn it over. Do you know when you're doing wedding parties and uh, events where, uh, for proms and things where later she might want to take her hair down and, well, just take her hair down, never mind what she's going to do. Uh, and know that there's going to be some movement on the hair. Okay, so I'm just dropping this section back. Okay, no, no teasing on the hair, you can tease it, but when I put that bobby pin on, I'm gonna pull it down, turn it over, slide it on a little bit of an angle like this, crisscross it with another bobby pin, and then to change the look, bring that end up over top of that. So the hair has a little bit more motion than just being pulled back uh, just into the regular bun kind of shape like that. You know, this folding technique is so easy to do. And you know, even if you don't enjoy updos, if you don't like them too much, um, these make it really simple. The hair has a nice kind of look to it. This is, for me, uh, inspired by Italian hairdressing that I saw uh, in the springtime uh, uh, in some magazines where the hair is just pulled up from the bottom. We did looks last year uh, called uh, Swifts that you can get them on DVDs and stuff. But it's nice and soft, it's nice and easy to do. And the more sections you take, the more detail you get. I'm gonna take these little front pieces, just across your front area like that, and by section, just lift them up, tease them 12 times across the base, and I'm gonna pull them back, slide a bobby pin on it, just at three inches long. And when I turn it over and slide it in, it introduces a little bit more pattern across the front and a boinger, okay? Now, boingers are interesting in the hair, but it all depends on the situation, okay? It'd be nice, now don't uh, think I'm just being off color here, but this would be a nice thing if she saw somebody that she liked or her, her partner, her special partner, that she could say, hey, Jim.
So look how easy this is to just turn your bobby pin over, pull the end down, and just start to put a little bit more detail in across the face like that. These are nice for uh, bridal looks, just for simple ideas too. And I like these just done to one side. But when you look at the profile, you can see the profile doesn't come out really flat. You're pinning at the flat, but it pushes that hair up just a little bit. And you want to be able to pop looks together like this in maybe 10 or 15 minutes, uh, and then take an extra five minutes to detail it at the end. Okay. I'll show you how to treat a boinger in just a second. Okay. Just a, just a little pin here, turn it over and direct it straight back into the hair. All it does is just break up that front, give it a little bit of detail, but also softens the fringe line. A lot of times girls with heavy fringes, when they wear their hair up, it just looks a little uh, kind of more sophisticated when the fringes are kind of broken up into the back. Okay. Okay. These are like mouse traps. You can set them to go off at any time. Like if it's a bridezilla and she's just annoying you, put a little spray on there, but not too much. When she opens that veil, boing, 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 boing. You know, it's like, you know, we all get kind of stressed out. It doesn't matter how good you are with updos, but we all get a little bit stressed because we want to do a good job. We want everything to be perfect. But sometimes, and it's never us, it's the hair it just won't do what it's supposed to do. And how many of you found that when you're working on someone, even if they're a long-term client, if their hair's not going well, you don't like them anymore? You've ever been doing somebody's hair for the wedding and you, and you think to yourself, okay, this isn't looking so good. <sighs> I can't stand you, and I'm so sick of hearing about your wedding. Blah, 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 blah. If a client gets out of control, I used to always say, you know what, I read in the paper last night, I wonder if you heard about this, about this new trend of grooms not showing up for the wedding. Have you heard of anything like that? Now, that's just mean-spirited, but it makes me feel good. <laughs> That's why a lot of times when I'm pinning, even if it's a special loving day for her, I'll bite one of those nibs off. And when I put it in, I go like this, okay? So she has a beautiful little scab there the next day. And she thinks she did something wrong. Okay, okay. that little section here, into 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So all we're doing is just kind of encasing that back section by just using small triangles around the front to break up the fringe area and add a little bit more sort of decoration for the veiling, okay? Now, you can use your uh, irons at the end, but you know what, I like to work with the hair, try to get it to respond to me first, and then iron whatever pops out towards the ends. I'm just talking to her hair. And if you ever get a client that says, please make sure this stays in, tell them that you'll pin their hair on the latest technique from Paris <laughs> or Turkey or Wales, any place you want. But spin the pin. This does absolutely nothing. And then put the pin in. How does that feel? Okay. Aren't those something? You, we have to realize that clients don't know everything that we think they know. <laughs> because how many of you have been surprised yourself, you've done somebody's hair, and as you're doing it, you're thinking, okay, this is bad. This is bad. I hate my job. I hate my life. I hate the kind of salon, clients that come to this salon. You start ha hating everybody. And when you're done, she goes, oh, I love it. And the first thing you think is, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but that just goes by really quick because your whole attitude changes and you go, oh yeah, I love doing updos. You know, people come from all over the place for me to do their hair. That's just the way we are. You know what, we sort of roll with the punches. If a client comes in and she's in a good mood, so are we. If she's snotty, oh, we are so snotty. Ew, I wouldn't do that either. Ew. I can't stand people like that. 
you know, if they're sad, we kind of get a little bit sad for them. But, you know, uh, as hairdressers, our whole job in our life that's more important than our talent is our ability to be giving. And we're just naturally like that. Uh, you know, we're not always in a good mood. Not everything's perfect. But when you look at all the people in your town or your community and stuff, hairdressers are, are a safe house. It's something where a client can go to, uh, they can say what they want, they can feel comfortable, uh, and know that it's not going to be all over uh, town. My, you know, when I first started hairdressing, uh, my parents, in advice to me, said, look, the, for the first year that you know a client, you shouldn't be talking about yourself and your life and stuff like that. It should always be about them until you know them thoroughly. And they know that when they come to you, it is about them. And then you can give them little details later. I used to tell them everything. <laughs> now I have nothing to tell. <laughs> Just hold it. But you know what? The thing is, it, when a client comes to us, they may come under the idea of their just about their hair. But you know, it's comfort, it's acceptance, it's encouragement, and it's beauty. And I, I think that of all the uh, choices that you could have made in life in terms of careers, we're all smart to be in beauty. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask me on the plane, or just because I travel so much, um, they'll say to me, well, what do you do for work? Or what do you do for a living? I'm always proud to say, I work in beauty. I'm a hairdresser. So you would, if it's color that you like, if it's uh, waving or styling or blow drying, frame your situation and make yourself more proud of what you do. I'll say, you know what, like um, I work in beauty, I'm a hairdresser and I teach and go on like that. And if it's color for you, then introduce yourself to new people and new friends and new clients with, hi, I, I work in beauty, I'm a colorist. And it sets up all of us because you know what, in media, uh, cl clients are interested in uh, our fashion, our type of fashion now more than ever. So I think it's really important. Uh, you know, doing wedding looks and stuff like this uh, is easy to do, but if you don't do a lot of updos, how many of you do get kind of nervous when it's the night before? Anybody been in bed the night before a wedding? You think, okay, okay, this piece is going to go here. That one, I'm going to bring it over here. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. When you wake up, you forgot your dream. The, the whole day is just a horror. Um, but you know, the thing is that uh, um, to do hair and start, even if the styles that you like to do, is try to rename them. You know, uh, we look at trends in style, and hair is more romantic. It's softer and prettier. We could make her hair quite loose, but just by doing these soft little looks, this would look really good with her veil. Uh, and sometimes when I'm finished, if, if you're anything like that, is I can get the hair done, but when I pick up that veil to put it on her head, I'm thinking, oh, please, just one more. Let me hit the right spot with this thing. And we look very professional <laughs> and hope. Okay. How many of you try this idea out? Anybody? No? Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Thank you.